Okay, so now we're going to talk about calendars and calendar structure. We consider this one of the most foundational features in Team Builder in order to have a successful account. So calendars can be found in Coach Tools to down to Manage Calendars. And a calendar is basically the way that we get training programs to athletes. We build our training programs on calendars. We assign athletes to those calendars, and that's how we match training programs and athletes. So here you can see I have quite a few calendars, and we're gonna use this top cluster here as our example. As you can see, I have this calendar called baseball. We, we refer to this as a parent calendar. It's a parent because it has two sub calendars underneath it. So one thing that's important to know about this calendar structure is what we call the trickle down effect. And that means that if I write a training program on the baseball calendar, it will trickle down to anything underneath it, including pitchers and position players. So for example, if I wrote back squat for baseball, everyone would be assigned back squat. And if I went to the pitcher's calendar, that would give me the opportunity to modify or add to or subtract from that workout. So for instance, if my pitchers need to do some sort of shoulder mobility, strengthening exercise in between back squat sets, I would add that to the pitcher's calendar. Only the pitchers would get that modification. The position players would not. The third tier, which is not visible here, is the individual athlete tier. You don't actually have to create that calendar. It's created automatically. For example, if I add John Doe as an athlete and I assign him to pitchers, then my three-tier system would look like baseball, then pitchers, then John Doe. If I needed to make uh, modifications to John Doe's calendar, I can go to his individual calendar and do that. And that would be the final version of the workout that makes its way to John Doe. Okay. So on this page as well, we have the ability to archive calendars. So if you work with a team for a year and you write programs and then you no longer work with them, you can delete the calendar or you can choose to archive the calendar. That's an option as well. Another thing you can do is you can filter by active or archive calendars. And then you can also choose to collapse all calendars. And that will mean that it, we will collapse all the sub calendars underneath. So if you're a large organization and you have a lot of calendars, collapsing and expanding will help you kind of navigate this page a little bit quicker. So another thing about creating calendars is to think about how you name them. Sometimes I see coaches make the mistake of creating a calendar like baseball and naming it baseball 2020. The thing about a calendar is, is that it, it's ongoing. It never really stops. You program 2020 workouts on the baseball calendar, but as soon as we transition to another year, it's still the same calendar. You don't have to create another calendar. So try not to assign um, time-based names uh, to calendars, baseball fall, baseball 2020. This just represents an ongoing program for a particular baseball team. And that's a good way to think about building calendars.